Hello everyone, today in this module I am going to talk about low temperature stress. Cold temperature stress is one of the common environmental factors which limits the geographical distribution and growth of many plant species. The low temperature limit at which plants grow is about 5 degrees centigrade independent of the growth form, life cycle or geographical locations. Low temperature from 0 degree to 15 degree centigrade causing chilling stress and the temperature less than 0 degree causes freezing stress. Plants which grow in tropical or subtropical areas are susceptible to low temperature whereas temperate plants survive even at minus 30 degree centigrade. Cold adapted plants show genotypic changes that resist local low temperature extremes and enable their survival over generations. On the other hand, plants showing cold acimation are able to reversely adjust their metabolism to cold temperature stress. The learning objectives of this module are introduction to low temperature stress, low temperature induced damage, adaptive mechanisms to low temperature stress, morphological and life cycle adaptations, physiological mechanism for acclimation to low cold temperature, cold signaling, cold regulated gene expression and summary. Low temperature induced damage. The potential cold stress symptoms include surface lesions on leaves, a water soaked appearance of the tissue, discoloration, desiccation, embolisms in xylem vessels, frost burn, tissue breakdown, accelerated senescence, delayed transition to flowering and pollen sterility. Freezing imposed dehydration stress due to reduced water uptake by roots and an inability to close to matter. In the figure we can see the surface lesions on leaves, water soaked appearance, discoloration, desiccation, accelerated senescence and frost injury to leaves. Freezing imposes dehydration stress due to reduced water uptake by roots and an inability to close to matter. Ice formation takes place outside cells causing a decrease in water potential outside cells. This causes water from cell to flow outside causing dehydration induced damage to cells. Therefore, the main cause of frost damage to plants in nature is extracellular ice crystal formation that causes secondary water stress to the surrounding cells. We can see the osmotic stress due to ice formation at low temperature. Metabolic activity is arrested or is reduced due to loss of enzyme activity at low temperature. Photo inhibition followed by photo oxidation, destruction of chlorophyll and ultimately cell death is seen in leaves of the chilling sensitive plants like bean, cotton, maize, rice and tomato. Low temperature also decreases the fluidity of membrane lipids. Functional membranes are hydrated and in a liquid crystalline phase. On exposure to cold stress, dehydration of cells causes the membranes to go into a gel phase. On rehydration, the liquid crystalline phase is restored and the membrane becomes functional again. However, when rehydration occurs at low temperature, phase transition occurs resulting in a leaky membrane. Such cold temperature induced phase transitions in membrane affect electron transport in chloroplast and mitochondria. This causes a built up of reduced electron transport component which bring about the generation of re reactive oxygen species. Morphological and life cycle adaptations. In the evergreen trees of temperate regions of the plants have to face freezing stress during most of the time of the year. Evergreen conifers and broad leafed evergreen have wax coated leaves so that they are protected in winter from desiccation. The conifers have small narrow needle like leaves in spruces, pines, firs or scaled leaves as in case of cedar and cypress which reduce the surface area to reduce transpiration of water and the risk of freezing. 
as we can see in the first figure. They also have few stomata in the needle leaves. They also show the presence of terpenoids and alcohol in the xylem sac which prevent freezing of water. An important adaptation shown by plants growing in temperate region is their ability to retain water within the plant tissue in a super cool gel like state by which ice formation due to nucleation is prevented. Another adaptation involves the termination of growth activity during winter. Cold acclimation is a plant's ability to reversely adjust their metabolism to survive the changing weather. Annual plants like rye adjust their metabolism during the winter months to enable them to cope with cold stress. Physiological mechanisms for acclimation to low temperature. Photo inhibition of photosynthesis takes place under low temperature because of low temperature induced desiccation. Conifers show acclimation to cold stress induced photo inhibition by reducing antenna size, a partial loss of photosystem 2 and non photochemical quenching of absorbed light as heat. These mechanisms for protection against photo inhibition have been seen in photo inhibition modules. Plants acclimated to low temperature during winter also show changes in the photosynthetic apparatus. The size of the light absorbing chlorophyll antenna is reorganized by PSBS, an integral protein of PS2 to increase the capacity to dissipate absorbed in light non photochemically as heat. The number of photosystem 2 reaction center complexes are also reduced. Photosystem 1 remains intact during winter and acts as an efficient non radiative quencher or an drive cyclic electron transport supporting a pH gradient and ATP synthesis when the temperature increases. The plastoquinone pool remains reduced during winter owing to the reduction power contributed by stromal electron pool and by cyclic electron transport. In the slide we can see the changes in the photosynthetic apparatus during winter observed in cold acclimated plants. Cold stress acclimation in Jumli marshy, JM and the IR64 genotypes of rice is shown here. Jumli marshy that is JM and IR64 seedlings were grown for 3 weeks under regular growth conditions and then moved to 4 degree centigrade cold conditions. After 3 days in cold conditions, plants were moved back to regular growth conditions and allowed to recover for 2 weeks. In figure A, plants are seen which are just before cold exposure and in figure B, cold treated plants after recovery for 2 weeks. The third that is the C figure shows the chlorophyll FV by FM ratios in JM and IR64 during cold stress exposure. Cold acclimation by synthesis of antifreeze proteins. Antifreeze proteins known as AFPs, also known as ice binding proteins or IBPs have evolved as an important adaptation in numerous organisms exposed to sub-zero temperature. Antifreeze proteins are secreted by overwintering plants and provide freezing tolerance as shown in snowdrops in the family of Amarilidaceae. Antifreeze proteins provide freezing tolerance to snowdrop plants. The narrow leaves are bluish green in color and the leaf tips are hardened to enable them to break through frozen ground. Antifreeze proteins are secreted by cells and block ice nucleation in the intercellular spaces. Antifreezing proteins have been purified from over 15 plants including gymnosperms, dicots and monocots. This slide shows the transgenic plants expressing a gene encoding an antifreeze protein. We can see the transgenics have been developed from tomato, tobacco, arabidopsis and the gene origin are from different organisms like fish synthetic winter flounder type 1 AFP fused with truncated 
Staphylococcus protein A. Next is the insect synthetic spruce budworm. Next is a fire colored beetle AFP. And the last one is a carrot AFPs. Now we will be talking about the cold stress signaling. The sensor for cold stress has not been identified, but membrane rigidification is thought to play a major role in cold perception. Membrane proteins are thought to respond to changes in membrane fluidity by activating a signaling cascade that leads to regulation of gene expression. Some membrane located proteins are also thought to sense the transition of the physical phase from the liquid crystalline to gel state of membranes. Calcium is an important secondary messenger in the low temperature signal transduction pathway involved in regulating the cold acclimation response and calcium level increase rapidly in response to low temperature. A cyclic nucleotide gated calcium that is CNGCK channel has been identified as a low temperature activated calcium channel. It has been shown that this increase in calcium concentration is required for full expression of at least some cold regulated genes and of plants to cold temperature tolerance. Besides calcium, inositol polyphosphate IP3 is also known to play an important role in signaling for cold stress. We can see in this slide the role of plant hormones in improving low temperature tolerance. Low temperature stress leads to increase in ABA and JA levels, decrease in JA, ethylene and cytokinin levels. JA and cytokinin signaling is inhibited leading to growth arrest. Ethylene signaling is also inhibited, hence inactivating the transcription factors, ethylene insensitive 3 which is a negative regulator of CBF expression. ABA response factors, ABFs are activated which regulate transcription of some core genes. J reliefs jazz repression of IS1 and 2 genes leading to their expression. Cold regulated gene expression. Low temperature stress is known to bring about regulation of gene expression by a signaling cascade composed of a hierarchy of transcription factors called as regulon. IS1 and IS2 that is the inducers of CBF expression are MYC type basic helic loop helic transcription factors which have been identified as upstream regulators of another class of transcription factors called CBF3 and REB1A factors which belong to the AP2 family. In Arabidopsis 3 CBF and REV1s are involved in the regulation of cold response genes. The cold stress activated transcription factors bind to the promoters of a variety of downstream genes which are the core genes which confer cold tolerance. The proteins coded for by the downstream gene include other transcription factors, dehydrins, late embryogenesis abundant that is LIA proteins which protect other proteins against cold induced damage, proteins coding for genes involved in the synthesis of osmoprotectins etc. all of which contribute to a cold tolerant phenotype. To summarize, low temperature limits the geographical distribution and growth of many plant species. This stress shares several features with other abiotic stresses like dehydration and salinity since cold stress leads to dehydration of cells. It also affects membrane fluidity and affects electron transport processes. Photoinhibition and oxidative damage are seen in response to low temperature. Plants show various features to acclimatize to cold stress and are equipped with an elaborate cold signaling pathway which confers tolerance to plants. An understanding of how plants sense and respond to freezing stress has practical applications in evolving new strategies for the improvement of freezing tolerance of agronomical important plants and in expanding the geographical distribution of a plant species. Thank you.